Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about packet forwarding and how the route prefix length is related to that process. So on a router it's very common to have multiple routes in the IP route table for a single destination. If you remember in the ICND1 material we talked about how routes actually get into the IP route table in the first place. So if we have our router and we have a very simplified view of the IP route table, we mentioned that administrative distance is used to evaluate the different sources of the routes and the best ones are chosen and then we populate the IP route table. Well, now that all the routes are in our IP route table, how is a choice made then? What if we have a destination that can be found in each one of these routes? What is the router going to do? because each one of these is different and they're all valid and in fact they're all related because they all kind of overlap in one way or another well that's what we're going to talk about here how does the router make this decision and as you can tell already having a good grasp of IP addressing and subnetting is going to come in very useful okay so let's let's take a look at this Okay, we've expanded our diagram a little bit to show a router, this cloud, which represents a big network, and a PC. And a packet just came into the router and is destined for the PC. And here's the PC's IP address, 192.168.2.2. And here is the router's IP route table, a simplified view of it at least. Now these are the same routes that we just looked at but we've added some source information so the routing protocols OSPF, EIGRP and RIP version 2 were all used to populate the IP route table and then we've listed the next hop so routers B, C, D and E and they're all in the cloud somewhere and so we have four matching routes on our router all of these have a different prefix length meaning they have different subnet masks and they're all considered valid different options to the router. So if we were to look at each one of these, we, we would understand why. Here's the range of IPs in this slash 22. You can see there's just over a thousand different IPs in there. If we look at the slash 24, we have 192.168.2.0 all the way up to 2.255. So our destination fits in there pretty easily as well. On the slash 26, our destination fits into that range without a problem, really. And then finally, we look at the slash 29. It's the smallest one we have listed, but still our destination falls in there. So these ranges illustrate that our destination can be found in each one of these. And each one of these routes overlaps with at least one more in the table. So you can see the slash 22 all three of these other routes, the 24, 26, and 29, they would all fall into this 22. The 26 and the 29, those can fit inside the slash 24. And then finally, the slash 29 can fit within the slash 26. So you can see also that, you know, having some good knowledge of IP addressing is really useful to understanding how routing works. Okay, so which route is going to be chosen? Well, there's a rule to follow, which makes it a lot easier for the router. When it has multiple routes and they overlap like this, the rule is the most specific route is always chosen. Now, the most specific route is the one with the longest prefix. And the longest prefix really just means that the more specific the route, because the number of options is actually shrinking, the smaller the route gets. So think about that. If we look at the slash 22 again, we have over a thousand IP addresses in there. If we send the packet in that direction, well, you know, it, it falls in there. We just, we've proven that it falls within this range, but it's not very specific. I think we can do better. Now let's jump all the way down to the slash 29. There we only have eight options. There are only eight IP addresses in that subnet. So we have a much better chance of getting to our destination if we choose that route than we do by choosing the slash 22. Okay, so we're narrowing down. We're taking the, the, the narrowest option that we have.
If, if you're struggling with this and, and IP addressing and subnetting are still uh, on your table and you're learning them now, the longer the prefix just simply means the highest number in the slash notation. So slash 29 is a higher prefix or a longer prefix than all of the others. Okay, so in our example here, the slash 29 would actually win, and this route would be chosen to send our packet to the destination. Now, it's not feasible to run through this each time you're on a router. This is really just a learning exercise. Um, there's a command you can use, and it is the show IP route command. And what you would do is you would put your destination IP address as your parameter. And this would tell you right off the bat the best route that's going to be used by the router when it has more than one option. Okay, so remember this rule. The most specific route will be chosen when you're trying to figure out how a router is going to behave. Okay, and so that's it. Thanks for watching.